Today we're going to tell you how to build your own sound kit with BTRP's own Chris Gillard right here on No Rest for the Weekend. Hello and welcome to No Rest for the Weekend, the show where we go behind the scenes and talk to the creators of independent film and series. I'm Jason Godby, and with me in the Rabbit Hole studio uh, once again uh, is uh, my good friend, sound man, all the, the head of all things sound and music for Behind the Rabbit Production and the man behind Soundhouse Audio, Mr. Christopher Gillard. Hey, man. How you doing? Good to have you back. It seems like minutes yeah. since you've been here. Um, so, like it was earlier today. <laughs> like it was just like <laughs> seems like forever ago and just yesterday that you were here in the studio with us. So um, welcome back. Thanks. Uh, today, now we started doing uh, uh, gear reviews here, and uh, we did the the C two hundred review with Matt Hendershot, and today we're going to talk about sort of how to build your own sound kit because uh, this is something that you've done yourself, uh, and this is mainly for. We're not going to talk about your post setup, but your production setup. Right. So this is all your sound gear. Like my field kit. Your field kit. That's yeah. the, this is Chris's. What's inside Chris's field kit uh, for sound? So give me a rundown of 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 all the the different pieces that you oh, you take on a, a job when you're on set. Well, definitely, I have a well. I have two recorders. I have a Zoom F8, which is like the really good one, and then I have a Zoom H5, which is like my backup or you know for smaller jobs. Um, for my shotgun mic, I have a, an Audio Technica 875R, which is um, it's a fairly inexpensive mic. It's really good. Um, actually, the price has gone up on that since I bought mine. Um, I think it was like 85 when I bought mine. I looked it up yesterday. It's like up to 150 now. Mm. Um, so I'm like. I'm like the stock genius of buying equipment. That's like the third time that's happened to me. <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, and I have, um, in addition to that, you know, I, I have some pretty like off-brand headphones that I love um, <laughs> because they were reasonably priced and they've got a good flat frequency response and they're, you know, closed ear headphones. Now I know a lot of the people like they wind up wanted the Sony like MXR 80 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, that, that's, I, I have a pair of those at yeah, home. Yeah. Yeah, um, ubiquitous. Those are everywhere. They are. They seem to be like the industry. What do you use for your headphones? Um, like I said, they're these these off brand headphones. They're called Hi Fi Elites that I found on Amazon, and I love them because they're you know they're again they're a good quality headphone. They give you you know good frequent flat frequency response, so everything is accurately represented, and um, they're pretty inexpensive. They were like. They're like 50, 55, 60 bucks. Nice. They're not, they're not, they're not going to break the bank. And um, they are, like I said, they're closed ear. And they, like I said, they, they don't over represent anything. They give you a good, accurate picture of what you're actually recording. You've got your, uh, your mixer, mm -hmm. you've got your backup recorder, your headphones, your shotgun, mm -hmm. you carry a boom pole yep. as well. Obviously, yeah. So. Recently, and then you also you have wireless as well. Yeah, I do have I have three wireless lobs that are, um, again, another, you know, not really known brand that I found came across on Amazon that had really great reviews, and I picked up uh, three of them. It's called the company is called Five Fine F I F I N E, and um, they sell these little nice little decent little wireless lobs for like 25 30 bucks and they're you know 10 frequencies so you're not locked into one frequency if you have interference you can choose another one um, I've used them a couple of times now and I've been very happy with the results what, what kind of range do you get on those things um, I have not tested the the limits of the range but in the reviews I've seen people have gone up to a hundred feet now recently you upgraded from the h5 mm -hmm. to what's the new the model F8. Do the F8. Uh -huh. What was the reasoning there, and why did you, why did you go to the the? I guess it's a bigger mixing board. It's a little bigger. It's a little bigger unit. Um, there's a few things in terms of use. There's a few things in terms of features. Um, basically, the F8 has eight inputs, uh, whereas the H5 only has two built in, and then you have like another two that you can add on. Um, the F8 also has some, like I said, some extra features like. You have uh, time code sync, so you can, you know, 
you can run time code to your camera or you know you can jam time code to the camera or jam time code from the camera to the recorder either or what's the significance of that if you have uh, as opposed to using like uh, the smaller h5 which doesn't have a feature like that um it's just you know everybody still uses the clap sticks to to sync audio and 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 video but you know the the real you know if you really want to save yourself some time you can sync the time code which is you know Basically, time code gives a digital address to each and every frame, and it can, you know, assign that same address to the corresponding piece of audio that goes with it. So when I'm looking in my editing software, if I pull that into Final Cut or Premiere or something like that, and I look at the actual sound file, that time code will be attached to it. It'll be synced to it. So if you set both to zero, you're synced. So then I can just boom and post, link it up, and I don't have to worry about moving sound no, files around or anything. At all. Fantastic. Um, so with this kit, now this is something that you yourself built. Mm -hmm. uh, this is sort of like um, you, you know, you're like me, I think, where like you will research everything on the market yeah. before you decide to buy anything. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it, too, because, uh, you know, that when you first start out, you're not making millions of dollars right. to invest in you're gear. You're on a budget. You're um, definitely. So, you know, and, you know, Chris and I have, have often talked about when we were starting out uh, buying the top of the bottom, bottom of the of line. line. Yep. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's not the best, but it's yeah, pretty good. It's like, not the absolute bottom of the barrel, but it's acceptable. For it's the top of the bottom, bad, you know, top, so, of the top of the bottom <laughs> of the line, as we call it. Uh, but like with that, like I still have some gear that I bought like uh, from... And by the way, just full disclaimer, I should have mentioned this up at the front of the show, uh, even though uh, Chris owns these products and I have owned these products myself, um, we are not endorsed by or sponsored by any of this gear. No. So this is uh, completely unbiased. This is stuff that you know he researched and, and bought for himself. And um, you know we're also not telling you you know where to go buy it or anything like that. We're just saying you know what the brand names are. Anyway, having said that, I still have some of the gear that I bought um, that was either like the B and H brand, like Pierstone, or the the Flashpoint Anorama brand. Mm -hmm. I still have a set of I still have a set of soft boxes that I bought yeah. from uh, Anorama that were uh, you know. They give a decent amount of light. They're good, you know. They're good for like interviews and stuff, and they they don't weigh that much. And, yeah, um, and it's you know the the thing is it's if you have the budget for the top of the line stuff, go for it. But if you don't, there are there are alternatives. Very often, there very often are alternatives that are just as good, you know, or if they are of lower quality, it's an acceptable decrease in quality for the huge jump down in price. Right. So when you got the like say the lavaliers, mm -hmm. when I say, when I hear you know a lavalier is like under fifty dollars, right. I'm like oh boy. Oh yeah. yeah, um, yeah. It, were you skeptical at first? Yeah, like I said, I I because there's there's actually quite a number of people who have reviewed them on like on you know YouTube and other sites, and they are actually you know the audio in the video was recorded with these mics, and it's you know again it's is it the best sounding audio that I've ever heard? From a wireless lav? No. Is it acceptable? Yeah. When I research, and this is, might be a good topic to talk about as well, like uh, if you are going to invest in equipment, my, well, if it's anything big, I usually tell people like rent before you buy yeah. um, or borrow before you buy. Yeah. Like I know certain things that I've bought because I borrowed them from Patrick or I borrowed them from you or whatever. Uh, and I also, I'm a big YouTube researcher. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, I watch a exactly. lot of reviews on YouTube. Yeah, before I buy anything. I, when, I, when I was, I was going to buy a shotgun mic, well, I wound up going with the Rode shotgun mic. Yeah. One of the, the NT, yeah, yeah, which is, you know, another one of those, you know, this, I bought someone, I bought it off of somebody and the thing is still, you know, yeah. you could beat up a burglar with it and it's yeah, still fine. fine. Um, but there was one that was like, I want to say it was like 30 bucks or something. It was really cheap. And I said, oh, you know what, let me, you know, and it was a brand I'd never heard of. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, that sounds a little too good to be true. Mm -hmm. Did some research and, you know, people online were like, yeah, it kind of works. But, but you know, a $30 mic. Yeah, but it sounds and it sounds like a $30 yeah, mic. mic. Yeah. Um, so um, moving on. There for, so that's the wireless gig. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, you also built yourself kind of a funky shoulder mount thing too for your recorder. Yeah, um, I, which is I've never seen a sound person use that, but it, I, it's really when I, I saw a picture of you and I was like, oh, that's really inventive. 
Because uh, the, the, why don't you explain that to okay. people? So, you know, the standard sound operator, sound recordist on set usually has like the little sort of canvas bag that kind of hangs around their neck, and that's where the recorder is, and then they, you know, have their XLR going out from there uh, to their, you know, mic on the boom pole, and. I always thought that was really inefficient because with the bag around your neck, the recorder is basically down at your waist, which means when you're holding your boom and you're booming, if you need to make adjustments, you have to completely look all the way down and you can't, you can't even see your pole, you can't even see your mic, you could be falling into frame, you know, and I will say that almost every time I have fallen into frame, it's because I was looking down at a recorder at my waist. And I, was, and I thought, you know, there has to be a better way. And, and, you know, why can't there be something that sits the recorder up in front of me at eye level so that I can see what's happening and, you know, still be just kind of, you know, just turn my head a little bit to go back and forth. So I got a, um, yeah, a shoulder, it's a, actually a shoulder mount for a camera, um, which the funny thing is, I, as when I was doing the research on that, Every review I saw says they're terrible for mounting cameras on. <laughs> I didn't see anyone who was happy after I bought it, after buying one for using, you know, for a camera mount. But I was like, well, I don't need, I don't need it to be, you know, like steady for like a camera. I just need something that holds it in front of me so that I can see my levels and see, you have easy access. Well, to I thought that levels. was really cool. Like yeah. that, because uh, now, to, truth be told, like when you get into bigger budget productions, you know, there's a division between the boom operator and the sound so man. Nice. Right. So you, you know, you uh, you wind up doing double duty a lot of the times. Right. right. So most of the time, it's you know, one person is mixing. Right. And the other one, one is holding the boom. Right. Yeah. Um, so you have, you know, you have a sound team right. on there, but now I think it's become more of a common practice to have a, like a one, one man. Verse. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're, you know, you're the sound man, but also the boom operator. Right. Your shotgun is Audio Technica, mm -hmm. which is again kind of one of those top of the bottom of the line, line type brands. things. I mean, yeah. I've had, um, I've had Auto Technic, Auto Tech, Audio Technica uh, stuff for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I've used their wired lav mics, yeah. which are decent. Um, and I've even seen some of their shotgun mics and stuff like that. Um, but the good thing is, like, all this stuff is pretty upgradable. Right. So this yeah. would be for anybody looking to do this, This like where Chris is at and the stuff that he's recommending, this would all be good, like, starter kit right. type level stuff. Yeah. Um, did you that find... That you can grow with, you know. What were... It, what, if any, like, if, you, if you go through the equipment that you've got, like, uh, like for instance, with the recorder, mm -hmm. the, the H5, that's a Zoom H5 recorder. Right. Mm-hmm. What were the limitations of that? Again, you, limitations in terms of your how many you know channels you can record. Number one, because you only have again you only have two built in. There's an adapter you can buy that gives you a two more for a total of four. Um, but again, there's no uh, no ability to send or receive time code. Um, the display on the H5 is like monochrome, like that gray and black. And it's it's it, depending on where you're shooting, and it, it can be pretty hard to see. It is backlit, but I think the maximum you can have the backlit the backlighting on is I think 30 or 45 seconds before it cuts off automatically. So again, right, because a lot of the times you're in the dark. You're in the dark. Yeah, you know, you're in low light conditions. You need right. to be able to see, and the that's one of the things about the the F8 has like a nice full color. Well, the F8 um, is probably more geared toward capturing onset sound. Yeah, it is a field recorder. I mean, yeah. the, the F in F8 stands for field recorder. The H in H5 stands for handheld. So with, with like, if you were to, I mean, and a lot of people have used the Zoom uh, H4n, mm -hmm. uh, the H5. I mean, the H6 is I, becoming more popular. Uh, one, the, the one that I use, I use a, a Tascam 60D or D60. I can't remember how it's phrased. Um, but I got that. It was like less than a hundred bucks. Yeah. It's two channels. Um, I mean, it says it's four, but it's really not. It's yeah, like yeah. it's like stereo. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's decent. It's good yeah. for doing like running gun. If you have like sure. if you have a small camera, you want to set it on top of mm -hmm. uh, working with like a DSLR. Right. Those are great for that. And you know the the F8 again is sort of a step up because it is for like you said. With recorders, there's kind of, there's only two ranges. You have like the, you know, the, well, no. There's really, you have the, like, the range of your Tascam and like the H5, which is like, you know, 
two to five hundred dollars, and then you have like and seriously, you that's that's the range. Then you have the Zoom F8, which is like started out. I think it came was like nine ninety nine when it hit the market. It's down to like eight hundred now. Um, and then the next thing after that is your sound devices that start at like four thousand for someone who is has outgrown you know the handheld uh, designs or the handheld models but doesn't yet have the sound devices you know four six thousand dollars to drop on a recorder the f8 is kind of the only thing on the market that's in the middle so i mean um i'm sure tascam has something similar you know like other brands do but like so it I think with the the H and the H five is what you said. It's like right around a hundred bucks or something um, like that. It was like two two fifty, but I, I got like a, a kit that had a couple of like uh, mic attachments and stuff. So well, that's the other thing is like both of the little mic capsules that you can put on the H five. You can also mount them on the F eight. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So and they're because they're the same mm-hmm. Zoom brand, yeah. they, they'll work. Yep. Um, but would you say that the if you were just starting out, if someone says you know, I, like either your say your uh, uh, a run and gun DIY filmmaker mm-hmm. where you need to do your own sound um, or you're, you know, maybe you don't have a lot of bucks and you want to do like a small movie. Uh, would you recommend the, the H5 for that? Yes, definitely. Um, the, the, the F8 would be way for that situation. The F8 would be way more than you need. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, my, I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, I didn't upgrade till the F8 until I needed to put it that way. Yeah, I think that's a lot of things. People do that. Now, I would. This is a. This is another great sort of lesson too that you can talk to people uh, is when they go to invest in gear. Mm-hmm. Most people are like, if they have the money, right? Or sometimes if they don't, right. they go, I want the best camera, the best sound gear, and I and they spend all of this money, mm-hmm. uh, not knowing. Uh, what exactly they're going to use, use it for, it for. Yeah. or or because it's the best top of the line doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best thing for you. Right, and you can save a lot of money. Like I tell people, you know, like if you're shopping for cameras, you know, uh, leave money o- left over for lenses. lenses. Yeah, because you can get a great camera body yep. um, and spend. You know, you can buy a one DX, but you know how much money are you going to have no. to to buy glass? Yes. Yeah. And and really, you can get away with a cheaper camera body if you have really great glass yep. and then that glass will uh, that you invest in will will so still work on, on any you, you know when you upgrade the body yeah right exactly yeah so and you know like you were saying about the h5 you when you got the h5 it came with um that comes with like what you got it the comes, stereo it, yeah, it comes with an xy stereo pair right and then um it also comes with own, its own shotgun too right it, it doesn't well there are bundles you can buy where it comes with like a built-in shotgun that i i don't have it but i have seen it and i've i've heard good things about it um and you can you know you can buy all of the mic capsules separately for like you know they run anywhere from like one to 250 um but they have like a mid side capsule they have the like i said the xy pair they have a shotgun they have another capsule that, that I mentioned earlier that basically it's not another mic. It just adds two more XLR inputs to give you a total of four. Um, How many, like when you're on a set too, um, you know, like working with an H5 is great if you only have like two characters. Right. And you said yeah. with this attachment you get up to four. Right. So you, I know you just did a, a project recently mm-hmm. that was a short. Um, yeah. and, and how many characters did you It was three used? characters and I was able to, you know, because I had basically, I ended up using all four inputs because I had um, three lobs and the uh, and a boom so I used all four so of those you cut co- you cover you you with that setup you have you have your lavaliers going into d- your different inputs mm-hmm. into your mixer mm-hmm. and then you're also running boom over everybody Absolutely. Uh, to, c- to get redundant sound mm-hmm. that's I mean that's a great way to work I also recommend that method too yes. um, it's it, you know you can use one or the other but if you yeah. can do both right um, and like you said, you know, that that's works great for a production with a small cast or scenes where, you know, you only have two or three people in each scene. But if you start talking about more people, that's not going to be sufficient. You're going to need something like the F8 that gives you like up to eight inputs, you know. Right. And but, you know, a significant difference in price. Yeah. You know, yeah, between I mean, the two of them. Like I said, the F8 with the, the little bundle I got w- was 269 The... F8 was 800. Yeah. So, so it's a, that's, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, a jump. Yeah. 
and it's you know like I said it's it's and you didn't it's you know something like you didn't get that until you were like I'm going to be getting these jobs. jobs yeah yeah I need something I see I need something more than the H five right um, right especially you know again I made the decision that I want to go after more feature work and if you're going to do features you need that time code right because there's certain like when you go, and it's you know, I, this is another, we could probably do a whole show on this, but now I do see on different forums and stuff, like I see people getting hired based on the gear that they, they have, own. Yeah, which is. It's, and in and, and, and one way I understand it, because if you're a producer right. and you don't have a ton, you don't have ton a ton of, of budget to rent gear, it's like, oh, he already owns that, that right. you know. So you can get gigs with, by having, you know, a certain camera, no, a certain, certain cent, whatever. Yeah. But. Do you know how to use it's it? A, yeah, that's the and that's the thing. It's like you know, put it this way. I didn't start telling people I had an H five until I went out and spent some days just out around the city recording and playing around with the different features and making sure that I knew how to navigate through all the menus and and engage all the stuff that like the limiters and the compressors, the built built in onboard stuff. Um, because again, you know, yeah, you could have the greatest equipment in the world, but if you don't know how to use it, you're useless on the set. You know? Yeah, same thing with cameras. You yeah. know, like I didn't, um, I didn't start working as a cameraman until I had a significant amount of experience mm -hmm. doing a lot. You know, working for other people and mm -hmm. you know being a B camera and stuff like that. Right. This is all great stuff. I, I would say that you know, um, check this equipment out and you know see if it's for you. But definitely shop around. Yeah. Um, I think Chris's kit is a is a great kit for if you're doing like small movies and stuff like yeah. if you i mean when you get into bigger bigger better feature stuff you know there's upgrades that yeah. need to happen there but uh you can also and you can also resell this stuff kids oh, yeah. like this you, stuff holds value you know so if, if you oh. if you definitely if you said you know what i don't need the h5 anymore yeah. you could you could put that sucker on ebay and make and a little money yeah. back those things are still mm -hmm. people that are still using them. They're still very yep. much in demand. And oh. it, is this going to pay for itself? Yeah, you know, this absolutely. Is a good question. Yeah. What were you going to say? Um, no, there was one last feature I meant to mention about both the H5 and the F8, which you know, again, for me as somebody who does comp composing and stuff too, is both of those uh, devices you can connect them to your computer and use it as an audio interface into your recording software. Very cool. See, that's see something like my little Tascam. I don't think does that. that. Right. Um, it's just good for recording on set, but mm -hmm. something like that where it's you get like a two for one. one yeah. So you can. Um, so even if you are in a studio and you like say you don't want to record to the recorder itself, you yeah. can plug it into Pro Tools or yeah, Logic or something Logic, like that. Pro Tools, Cubase, and just use it purely as an audio interface. Cool. So uh, we're gonna wrap up here, but before we go, give me a uh, on location sound tip. Like, what would you tell somebody if you're, you're just getting into this or something that you discovered through doing that's, oh, this is always a good rule of thumb? Always have your own gaff tape and always have some fabric tape, especially if anytime you're working with lav mics. For, oh, I see. Okay, so yeah. like in uh, gaffer tape to, to tape for to? For everything, anything. For everything. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just make sure you have your own. Right, cool. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that's um, that's about it for us. Uh, we're, we're out of time, but thank you, Chris, for uh, for coming into the studio thank today. You. We appreciate it. And uh, for those of you who want to catch more episodes, uh, I would say take a trip to our website, btrp.nyc slash podcast. You can find uh, episodes there. We're also on iTunes and Stitcher and Pocket Casts and uh, all the other places that you see podcasts. Uh, for Behind the Rabbit Productions, I am Jason Godby. I'd like to thank my guest, Chris Gillard. And uh, thank you for joining us and uh, taking this trip with us. See you next time.